of black people in uncomfortable situations, you may have noticed the very occasional presence of moderator and interruptee Lester Holt. Uh, as you can imagine, this is not an easy job, so I'm going to ask your help tonight. I'm going to ask you guys do the heavy lifting on fact checking, and if you could also hit the lights on your way out, Keith, thanks. <laughs> now, to be fair, it's a nearly impossible job, even when one of the candidates isn't projectile lying in your face all night. Now, whether or not in a place like Chicago you do stop and frisk, which worked very well, Mayor Giuliani is here, it worked very well in New York, it brought the crime rate way down. <laughs> Oh, there, Archie Bunker. Lester can let a lot of things go, and he did, but not this. Stop and frisk was ruled unconstitutional in New York because it, it largely singled out black and Hispanic young men. No, it, you're wrong. Uh, it went before a judge who was a very against police judge. Oh, my God, what are you for? Good against smart answer. Lester is not wrong. You forgot he lives in New York and he is tired of building stop and frisk time into his commute. That was a solid fact check. Unfortunately, Lester seemed to be out of the room when Trump delivered most of his other whoppers. Maybe he went out to jam with his band. Oh, he plays bass, of course. The instrument that you're pretty sure is in the mix somewhere, even though you usually can't hear it. In the lead up to the debate, Team Trump made sure we knew their boy was just gonna wing it. Donald Trump's surrogates glossed over the GOP nominee's light debate prep and suggested a life of real estate and reality TV may be enough. Trump is doing great. He's being himself. Woo! Disrespecting the voters is chill. Yay, ignorance! <laughs> Trump warned us that Hermione Clinton would be cheating by doing something <laughs> called preparing, like some kind of busybody, PTA mom kind of overplanner. But Trump never considered the possibility that she might be a Count of Monte Cristo overplanner. <laughs> she spent months building an elaborate trap for Trump, and he lumbered right into it. All she had to do was step out of his way while he called a woman fat. One of the worst things he said was about a woman in a beauty contest. He called this woman Miss Piggy. Then he called her Miss Housekeeping because she was Latina. Donald, she has a name. Where did you find her? Her name Where is did Alicia you find Machado. Where did you find her? Ah, uh, from her? Also, from your book. You should read it sometime. You'll love it. It's about you. Those wily Clinton bastards knew there are three things Trump can't resist calling women names, doubling down, and making dumb mistakes on Fox & Friends. I know that person. That person was a Miss Universe person, mm -hmm. and she was the worst we ever had. The worst. She was a Miss Universe contestant and ultimately a winner who they had a tremendously difficult time with as Miss Universe. Did not know that story. Well, yeah. I didn't know you. What? What? She, was the, she, she was the winner, and uh, you know she gained a massive amount of weight. And uh, it was it was a real problem. We had a we had a real problem. L O L. No, you had a stunningly beautiful Miss Universe winner, but you treated her like garbage. Now you have a real problem, not only with her, but with any woman who's ever been called fat, which is all of us. <laughs> we we've been dealing with you our whole life. Mr. Stamina failed at just about everything he wanted to achieve that night, except maybe one thing. Now, in all fairness to uh, Secretary Clinton, yes, is that okay? Good. I want you to be very happy. It's very important to me. <laughs> really? Well, mission accomplished. Secretary Clinton. Woo! Okay. She loves this. That is the tits out party girl shimmy most moms reserve for an especially good wine meme. <laughs> After the debate, the candidates made the rounds. Hillary hugged the audience. Bill waited for the balloon drop. And Trump <laughs> stood around awkwardly with his blood relatives before bolting off stage to the spin room to soothe his wounded pride with the bomb of Sean Hannity's slobbering adoration. <laughs> At this point, I must warn anyone who is triggered by shade to cover their ears. We've got Trump speaking to our own Sean Hannity. We'll see whether he speaks to the journalists in this room uh, after that interview. Dear Diary, today I saw Megyn Kelly use her mean girl superpower for good. I think I'm in love. Before 
slinking home to tweet about fake polls. The schoolyard sadist left us with a fragrant little preview of what the next debate might look like. I was going to say something Please, extremely rough to Hillary, to her family, and I said to myself, I can't do it. I just can't do it. It's inappropriate. It's not nice. Oh, say it. <laughs> Please say it. I dare you. We'll be right back.